Which side do you guys want to start on? You got the Man- Mariners hat over there. You want to start on the Seattle side of things, Big D? Yeah, we could start on the Hawks side. They had a pretty decent year. We added some players. Um, did they draft where, any running backs? I think <laughs> they did. Some kind of nice glass of wine or something. Chardon- Charbonnet. 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 Charbonne. Um, they also added two uh, offensive linemen uh, in, the, in the draft in the in the fourth round and the fifth round. One at LSU uh, guard uh, Anthony Bradford, and in the fifth round a center. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce his last name uh, because uh, oh oh, I don't know Seattle guy. You got me on this one, or uh, <laughs> yeah, out of Michigan. Yeah, in in the middle, we got oh, double was, O's. He was good. We got double yeah. O's cracking. Double O's. Uh, so yeah, the kid from the center from Michigan was good. Yeah, they. I think he was yeah. a transfer from Virginia Tech or something like that. Sounds I think, right. I think Big D, you said earlier when we were talking that that was he was one or two on their board anyway, and they got him in the fifth round. Yeah, he was he was super high up for Seattle on on uh, from from the talk um, around and and they got him in the fifth, which I, they felt like, and I still feel kind of I, I feel the same, you know, like it was the steal, and um, they had the two tackles last year, right on rookie, you know, being rookies. Charles so Cross got, as the yeah. left tackle and Lucas Abraham on the right tackle, right. So mm-hmm. started two rookies all all season last year, um, yeah. Which you know it was, pre- and, and both were were pretty good held their own right they played well i mean I, I think seattle's looking for that cohesiveness in the offensive line get four four to five of them on rookie contracts get them get them young get them get them gelling right and uh and then add some pieces and see where you could roll and and that seems to be their game plan um they're i don't know i was kind of looking at the skill positions just in general and it, it's really hard to find and I'm Seattle biased, of course, but I mean, it's really hard to find like a wide receiver, tight end, running back, and even Gino did pretty well, but just the skill positions in general, that that room uh, with the talent wise um, in the NFL, when it, when it's full, full facet, the tight end room is a little bit of a sleeper, but they, I think they're going away from that directionally. And so, um, yeah, we're traditionally maybe a little bit more 12, and I think we're going to see moving to a little bit more 11 here. Is that what you're right. alluding to? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, they switched up their defense. They've been switching from 4-3 to 3-4, and now they're. I think the offensive game plan is um, slowly but surely changing as well, and, uh, and it's going to be interesting. So um, Yeah, real quick before we move on anymore there, let's, let's update this offensive line just a little bit more. Um, they lost Austin Blythe. Uh, I believe he signed with the Chiefs uh, on a one-year deal, so that was their center, um, mm-hmm. and they drafted a center. But the, the our lads has Evan Brown penciled in as a center right now, so we'll see kind of what happens. The center that they did draft, I, I believe, can play both guard and center. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, they brought back uh, Damian Lewis, who had been with them since 2019, I believe, and he was the 12th-ranked uh, guard on PFF. So. He's going to be the left guard, and then on the right guard, uh, they got Phil Haynes. He's coming back. He's one of uh, another returning starter, sort of. He played decent amount through through the season last year. Then they have the rookie uh, Anthony Bradford behind him. So two two rookies behind the center and right guard. We'll see how those camp battles play out. But they do, you know, like you said, you got a little bit of continuity along that line, and then two guys that they're excited about that they drafted uh, to potentially fill in those holes or take over or whatever. So you're trying to get a little more continuity. We talked about how uh, Walker was inefficient last year by a, a lot of metrics, and that's what everybody likes to bring up. And, well, we just stated they were starting two left and right tackle rookies, uh, right. And, and they had a slew of – I believe Gabe Jackson was was mixing it in there and was Dwayne Brown on the, on the team last year? Um, not last year. Not no. last year. Was that two years ago? Yeah, two um, years ago. Mm-hmm. So a mix on the interior and then, and then some, rookie, some rookie tackles. So, I mean, yeah, of course, mm-hmm. I know that yards – over expected factor in some of the offensive line play but i just I, I have a hard time believing they've dialed that completely in to take care of every facet of every play of every game uh, i get it it's a nice right. chart and when people look at it it just seems to be like as soon as that came out there was some doubt for kenny walker and then as soon as there was you know a chart saying that that travis etn was near the top of that chart well you know he ever, everybody liked him again and it was just like it's very strange that these charts are just 
I understand that it could help you save time, but you also have to go back and contextualize some of that. And I know that, that you'll say that the yards over expected does context, supposedly contextualize some of that, but I'm not going to take that for the gospel. I'm going to go ahead and watch. Um, so, but I think, I think you came away uh, with some good findings here with kind of your thoughts on whether Kenny Walker was overrated, underrated, properly rated here um, th- uh, through coming into this season though. Right. I think the, the, the vision of Kenny Walker being a top five overall running back, um, I, I never held that vision personally. That wasn't kind of where I saw him anyways. And so um, with the additions that they've added on and the subtractions that they've had in the running back room, like I, I don't really see him from a general perspective. I feel like he is going to perform at, at about the same rate, if not even a little bit higher because of the, um, the quality of targets and the quality of spots that he'll be on the, on the field from what they've added. So Kenny is <clears throat> a huge sell for a lot of people. Uh, three sticks is not, not for me. I'm, 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 I'm liking what he's bringing. I'm, I'm looking to make offers for the people that are scared. And, and um, I think, you know, uh, one of the big arguments is, well, if Sharp's there and, and, you know, he's a great pickup too. Uh, I, I think he, he has a lot of value too, obviously, if Kenny goes down. But what happens if Sharp goes down? I mean, then you've got right. three sticks with the whole backfield again, right? So right. you can look at it both ways. So um, that was kind of my like my high-level general take on on what's going on and, and how that offense, I think, you know, when you add in the additions of in the wide receiver room and kind of just how they're – I feel like they're going to scheme out the middle of the field. I, I just feel like it's going to be really hard to guard the running backs in the same manner that you have in the past. And so – so that was my my feel with trying to take off my homework classes. So right, and and you know, kind of going back a little bit with with uh, Kenneth Walker being there last year and kind of taking over. That was it was Penny to start with, and and we know Kenneth Walker was a little banged up uh, in the beginning of the season. Came in, then Penny got her. Penny was playing pretty well, got hurt, and then you know throughout the season they 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 pretty much had to throw a bunch of bodies uh, kind of in that backfield there. But when you go and and look at kind of how the the splits were and, and the carries were like, you know, I, I think basically it would seem that Charbonnet is going to gap gobble up what Homer Dallas, Tony Jones, and, uh, uh, what's, what's this other guy's name here? Uh, Godwin, uh, Egwa bouquet. Yeah. Egwa oh, bouquet. Like, he wasn't yeah. on the field a whole lot, but they were, they were throwing bodies out there and those guys were, were taking up, you know, if you, you look at snap percentage, 45% when, when, Homer was out there 37% when DJ Dallas was out there 22% for Tony Jones. So, you know, if you kind of take all that and, and, and give it almost all to Charbonnet, I think, I think you're probably going to be at a 55 to 50 or 60, 40 kind of split here to kind of start the season. Right. I mean, is that kind of why it doesn't bother you that much? Yeah. I mean, he, so weeks 12 through 17, he averaged 55% on the snap, uh, on the snap count. And I don't really see that changing for him. Like you, you just laid out perfectly. Like, you know, Travis Homer got hurt. He was a pretty big piece of it. DJ Dallas, they lean pretty heavy on that, especially after all the injuries. When you take in all those numbers, all, all the, all the factors that you just laid out and all the, all the, all the stuff that, the, that uh, we'll call it the rest, right? The rest of the field did like, and you kind of just hard to hand that over to Sharp. I, I just, I, it's hard for me to see them taking uh, three sticks off the field more than what they did already. Like, I, I, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like he's the better running back in the in, in the backfield in general. He's definitely got more experience. Right. And so, like, he's going to be in there in important positions, important plays. And I, and I just it's it's really hard for me to see his snap percentage being lower than what it ran towards the end of the year, which was 55 percent. Also, Kenneth Walker is certainly more of a home run hitter than Charbonnet is. Right. Um, and, and he has those uh, that, that kind of game breaking uh, ability and you know through through Kenny's short career here you know he he had 228 attempts which was good for number 11 uh 1050 yards which was good for number 11 uh yards per attempt were 4.6 24 TDs were 9 uh so may, maybe we see a, a little bit of a TD regression and maybe we see a little short yardage regression because I believe short yardage was a, a bit of a bugaboo for for three sticks in this last campaign here Um, I could be completely wrong, but yards after contact, 720, that's good for 13th. Yards after contact per attempt, 3.16, that's good for 17th. 10-plus yard runs, 29, that's good for number 10. 
Um, design runs of 15 or more, uh, 17, that's good for three. Uh, and, and mind you, that, that three sticks wasn't even in the rotation here for right. a little while. And then again, playing with two rookie tackles and then a, a little bit of a somewhat of a carousel in the middle of that um, offensive line there. And Blythe didn't play particularly well, at least PFF right. grading wise. You know, breakaway percentage was 45.8. That's number two of all running backs. Um, mm-hmm. First downs, 51. That's uh, that's good for 13. And then the targets, 34 targets, uh, 27 receptions, only one drop, uh, and missed tackles forced, uh, 48, and that's number 10. So, you know, you, you can be upset by the yards over expected efficiency somewhat, and let's – I I guess what drives me nuts is like, all right, well, then that's it. Like, it's over. Like, he wasn't efficient. There's no right. way that he could get any better. There's no way the Seahawks could get any better. There's no way Kenny 3-6 could learn anything. Um, he's just explosive when he gets his plays and that's why, and it's like, well, this tells me a little bit more of the story that, that he was very good and, and kind of what he was given. And again, I understand the yards that, uh, ex- over expected kind of factors in some of that shit, but I just feel like there is certainly some context that, that it loses. Uh, there's, there's just no way that they factored it all in and the graph's nice to look at and it certainly saves you time, you know, sure. which is, I think what a lot of people are, are trying to do in, in our space you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly unsure why a lot of these guys even talk about fantasy football because it doesn't seem like they like football. They just want to look at graphs and, right. and analytics and then just tell you, well, I, now I know. Uh, but, you know, watching Kenny on the field and then some of these numbers, he averaged 13 points uh, per game. He's RB18, 202.5 uh, uh, PPR points for the season. So, uh, you know, and, and all those PFF numbers were with a 20% filter on 349. That's usually my standard. Uh, for talking yeah, for about sure. running backs. Um, so, you know, I, I think where Kenny is, was being drafted in that, in that third round, sometimes being the, the dynasty RB two, three, four has probably cooled a little bit for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and I think it's, it's probably, a, you know, I know it's semantics, but in a startup a round difference can, can cost you a, a pretty penny to trade up in. Um, so, you know, just that round difference in the startup, I think could make a, a bit of a difference. You know, our ADP right now has him somewhere around three, seven, three, nine. Um, you know, mm-hmm. and, and I think that has some factored in um, with, you know, not quite figuring out what to do with the Charbonnet thing. And some people in our drafts are still taking them pretty early. Um, I'm, I don't know that I'm very willing to do so. I'm seeing um, where he went in the most recent one we're doing now. I think Big D took him in the most recent one, which, you know, we, I, you hit it, you took him, and I was kind of like, yeah, still still on yeah, three sticks. Yeah, four nine, I'm okay with that. So four nine, every, everybody's okay with, with Kenny? Yeah, I just didn't want to take him at the beginning of the third. Right. right. Right, and I think that's really what this comes down to. It's not a it's not a hate on Kenny. I like Kenny, and I like I like ETN a lot, too. I like both of these guys a whole lot. I sung Kenny's praises this, this whole time. Uh, throughout this whole process, uh, rookies and and throughout the season, and, and again only one drop for for Kenny and 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 uh, I believe Pro Football Reference had him with two, so even two for a guy who couldn't catch it all, uh, you know, not not the worst. Uh, right. And now Charbonnet is going to come in, and maybe he does lose some of that goal line, maybe he does lose some of that passing down work, maybe he does lose a little short yardage, but the explosives are still going to be there. You think the offensive line and the offense are all going to improve? Uh, so scoring opportunities uh, and and uh, like I said, explosive plays uh, should should continue. T- to me, I- I'm less looking at Kenny and and I think I'm more looking at Charbonnet uh, when in these drafts. Anywhere from the eighth to the tenth round, if I can get Charbonnet, I don't feel like I'm losing a terrible amount between the two guys. And and I liked Charbonnet a whole lot in this process coming in. So. You know, I, I feel like that's the buy for me and it hurts my heart a little bit to say this. I, I probably am a little a little more off of Kenny than you guys seem to be. And mm-hmm. I, I we laid out a, a good case and, and I, I think you're right. I think it will be fifty five percent ish. And I think that's obviously that's enough for Kenny to do what he just did. Right. Is that kind of what right. your what your, you know, summer some what's the word I'm looking for? Summation is here. Yeah, I mean, I think that what we we've talked about on a couple shows now, and this one in particular, I'll just say it again, is like you just have to reset what you think of Kenny, you know, Kenny three sticks. Like he's he's an RB two, 
he's a solid RB2. If he's my RB1 on my team, um, depending on my build, like he, it makes me a little nervous. And I could understand why people will want to jet out on on the RB1 kind of upside. Or sorry, RB1 is, <laughs> has taken my team over the over the top. But if I could get him in like an RB, RB2 situation, like in the draft that we're, you know, the mock draft that we're currently doing, I have Austin Eckler and Kenny Three Sticks in my backfield. And Eckler could, to me, is my RB1 and, and Kenny is my RB2. And like, I'm, I'm thrilled with that because the upside on both those players specifically in Kenny is to me a back end RB one to, to mid RB one and uh, the upside um, you know, and, and the upside on Eckler obviously is RB one overall. So, so that's a little bit different story, but, but for, I, I'm, I'm with you on the, on the Charbonnet. I think, um, I think anytime you can get, you know, and, and we talk super flex PPR, right? That's what we sure, play. Good, tight end good premium. call. Good call. Yeah. yeah. So when we say eighth round, we're talking about a super flex tight end premium. So that, that could push it down and, and Charbonnet may be a little bit higher in yours, especially if you're playing one quarterback or, or non tight end premium. But, but I think um, in the eighth round, I think the upside of Sharp um, is, is to me, it's, it's worth the play. That's definitely how I would build a team. Um, I just, I can't pass on, I can't pass on Ken Walker at the end of the fourth going into the fifth. To me, that's that's too much value for what he can bring to the field. So, Well, you took him over Ramondre. I don't know if I'm there yet, but mm-hmm. is it the upside with Walker over Ramondre? Yeah, and the long-term play in a dynasty. I, I don't know how. I think Ramondre is probably going to outperform him this year, but I, I have to look at the contract again. But I, I thought that, and it's, Bill Belichick, so I, I always sure, am really hesitant sure. with New England running backs. But but I, I, I if I understand right, like this season for sure, next season maybe. And for me, I know three sticks is going to be there, right? And so for for that side of it, that's well, you got the an extra way year. You got it. an extra year. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get twenty. You get uh, this year and next year from Stevenson. But it's it's not to say that you know next year, you know maybe this year the, the Patriots let Stevenson kind of take a hold. Maybe he, maybe he does great. I'm banking on it. I like Stevenson a whole lot, but it's also not to say that they don't bring in and, and shorten that uh, exposure on Ramondre like they have so much in the past. Uh, right. I mean, we saw a team this year with a running back rush for a thousand yards, bring in a, bring in the, bring in a top 10 running back. So right. And in, in three sticks and Charbonnet, or are you, t- or are you talking about talking Tal- about, Algier? talking about Tal- Algier. <laughs> uh, yeah. Damian Pierce probably would have hit that mark too. If he, had it got injured. I think yeah, I mean, now you, got, close. now you got two two studs in those spots, right? You got Bijan, and then obviously you got Singletary with yeah. David Pierce. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, all kidding inside. I mean, for me, Walker, you know, if I can scoop him up in that late fourth, fifth round, I'm, 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 I'm fine with that because what's what's around him? Seattle has paid second running back or second contracts on running backs. And so I, I, you know, I could see him, you know, sticking around for a while, but even if he doesn't, I I think that he, he has all the the characteristics of a running back too, for me that I really, really like, and I can count on for at least three years. And that's kind of what I look at in from a dynasty lens. So, yeah. You got any final thoughts on the Walker Charbonnet uh, backfield here? Yeah. Charbonnet eighth, eighth might seem a bit early for me. I'd have to take a look and, let me see who's going around him. Well, I think I think for me, for the way that I've been drafting currently, a guy like Charbonnet fits in exactly how I have been drafting and how I've been liking drafting. Every year is different, right, in the draft. You can't just come in with a one-size-fits-all, this is how I draft. That's stupid. You need to be able to adjust with the market and, and how people are drafting. Big draft people, are. it's all about wide receivers. So, hey, you know, take some wide receivers – I, and I'm I'm personally staying away from a lot of running backs. I like the Ramondres in the, but I like because Ramondres is usually in like the fifth round of our drafts, um, and I like that. I like that. I don't unless I'm getting Brees or uh, or JT or Bijan. I'm I'm probably not messing with a, a running back until I see Robinson, Najee, Jacobs, um, kind of popping in there, and then I, you know hopefully I can grab one of those. If not, then. You know, once we get to the build of where I could grab, you know, like a Miles Sanders and a Charbonnet as my first or second and third running back, like I like the idea of having Charbonnet in in the mix, who has got, you know, for sure RB two upside and potential RB one upside. Like you were saying, Kenny Walker is it like reprogramming? Kenny Walker should be drafted as an RB two with RB one upside, whereas I think pre draft it was wheels up RB one all day, right? 
So you got to just, it's all about expectations and, and rounds you can get them in. I'm probably still pumping a little bit of the brakes on Kenny, but if I could catch a decent deal on Kenny, I'll trade for him. Yeah, um, I don't think you're, I don't know how but many I'm decent not, deals you're getting. I'm also not just, try, if I have him, I'm also not just trading him away because I'm scared. I'm fine. Like, I, th- I think he will produce just just fine. Uh, like you said, you, you, you've, we've been over it a few times, but at 55% snap, with and and we and we would assume that Charbonnet is basically going to be the Homer, the Dallas, and the Tony Jones all wrapped up into one, right? It's not. Right. We, he's basically going to assume the rest of that backfield, essentially, right? That that that, that would what yeah. you would assume that you want this that the Seahawks would like to see. Yeah, I think people want McIntosh to you know the other Kenny want him to be a thing, and and I I don't see that um, with DJ Dallas being there still too. You know, I I, think and, it's and, been I mean, is really... Travis Homer there? No, he's in Chicago. No, he's okay. in Chicago. Yeah, I was gonna say they seem to like him a decent amount. Um, they did. Yeah, but... they they played him quite a bit when he wasn't injured, right? And, and that's that kind of has been the the issue for their RB two in, in a world, and that's kind of where I've been at Kenny. If you look at it, a couple last couple of years and you just kind of look at what they tried to do with the backfield compared to what they had to do. Right. I mean, you had, you had Penny that was just always injured. He started off as the RB one for Seattle. And then when he got injured, he never came back from that injury, obviously. But, right. but point being is like, I think that they want a solid RB two, um, you know, with, with the decent upside, they tried to do it with Penny and Walker. They tried to do it with um, this last year. Um, and, uh, and, and prior in the pre- previous year, sorry. Um, but, but, um, I think going forward, I, I don't, I mean, I know DJ had a really great end of the season. That's one other person that we probably should touch on just quickly. Yeah. I, I don't know how much he's going to be involved, um, with Sharp there now. Um, I, I, I still think he's like the kick returner. He's still going to be out on the field for special yeah. teams. He definitely, he's definitely going to be on the team. No, um, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying from a fantasy perspective, I don't, I don't know how much of a role he's going to have, especially uh, if you look at the last half of the season where he was, you know, he was the RB two for Seattle. So, right. Um, yeah. And I, you know, you guys, you, you, Seattle would, would have liked to have Chris Carson and Penny, you know, uh, but unfortunately, Chris yeah. Carson, it, it, you know, injured and Penny kind of injured. So, you know, maybe this wasn't even the situation they saw themselves in, but they're trying to get back to that. Uh, so, you know, I, and I, I, I firmly believe that they that they want two running backs that are interchangeable. And if one gets hurt, we know we have another uh, stud that we can, you know, lean on a good bit in there. So uh, Charbonnet would be the play a little bit more than Walker for me. Thoughts? Yeah, cost for sure. Yeah. I mean, the guys going around him, Kendra. Aaron Jones on the other side. It's Dalvin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. All right. You guys ready to switch it up to the Jags? Start jagging off. Yeah. Duval. Duval. Uh, Let's jag it up. All right. So the reason we kind of put these guys together is because, you know, it does seem like a little bit of a similar ish situation. And and the guys who were the the ETNs and the walkers seem to be similarly valued. And then the the guys underneath them seem to have an undercurrent of of uh, a cult following of enthusiasm. Um, So let's kind of do what we did on the on the Seattle side with with ETN here and see if we come away with the same feelings of if we're cool with it if we like the price we think it's overpriced or underpriced here so right off the rip the jaguars lost uh Juwan taylor to the chiefs uh and they lost uh brandon linder uh who retired who was their center forever and cam robinson is suspended uh to start the season um who's their left tackle so they dra- and then they added a first rounder and uh anton harrison and a seventh rounder and cooper hodges from app state Um, and then they traded a few times in that first round and then, uh, but you know, nice to see guys, a lot of the Frank guys with good franchise quarterbacks invested, uh, offensive linemen in the first round, which is never a sexy pick for fans, but it's, it it should be good, uh, later on. So the starting, uh, offensive line for the Jacksonville Jaguars may look something like left tackle Harrison to start the season because Robinson's out, uh, Ben Barch at left guard, uh, Fortner at, uh, center who was a third round pick in 2022 uh, Brandon Sheriff who was a free agent bring in I believe last year at right guard and then uh, Walker Little could either play right tackle or left tackle so I'm not sure how if, if maybe they'll send Walker Little over to the left side because he's got some more experience and then they'll slide Harrison who's their first round pick over to the right side uh, but Walker Little was a second round pick uh, in 2021 got a lot of starts uh, this last year 
Uh, ben Barch also got a lot of play. Fortner uh, got a lot of got got some good run. Who and they were they were pretty satisfied with with all of those guys and how they played. Uh, so this offensive line uh, could potentially be a little worse. But they like I said, Linder got hurt and the center saw a lot of action. He can play a little guard too. Uh, so this offensive line could 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 and should be right around the same where they were. Uh, but but really it, the the rush. Uh, blocking was a little bit of a, a bugaboo for them. The rush success rate was 21st, and the pass success rate was 4th. The passing DVOA was 6th. The rushing DVOA was 20. The pass EPA per play was 6th, and the rush EPA per play was 25. So we already, you know, I, I don't know how much of an improvement we're going to see in the offensive line, but that's kind of where they was, where they were. And, uh, you know, that's probably why ETN playing so well is at the top of the total rush yards over expected this year because uh, he, he performed really well with maybe not the best uh, run blocking offensive line. So we'll see kind of how that shakes up uh, and shapes up here uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So what are your what are your general sentiments on ETN's uh, ADP right now? Are you looking at him? Are you drafted him? Is it is it too much for you? Are you are you kind of a little out or, or you know, and, and some rationale behind that? Yeah, for me, uh, ETN, ETN's interesting, right? He had um, the last half of the season, he was like at a 70%, almost 69% uh, snap share um, or snap percentage, I mean. And I just, and, and part of that I think was just out of necessity. They traded Robinson in the middle of the season. They were pushing to to make the playoffs as well. They're they're trying to be super competitive. And, and, um, and so he was on the field a lot. So I, I can definitely see him... Um, coming down off of that a little bit which makes me really hesitant to draft him where he's going i think he's uh in general i think he's like uh, early early fourth i believe in in both um you know um ffd's uh our our, our adp i i think he's also around the fourth and in, in sleeper yeah you get four three for sleeper and four one for the ffd adp currently yeah, he went four six in this in this last or this current mock that we're doing, and you know I just, I mean I I think it, you you talked about his efficiency. He's a extremely efficient. He does fumble from time to time, but you know it's not to me it's not very concerning. Um, and and in Peterson, uh, you know we trust. I mean Doug is just an, a tremendous coach, and so I. I love the upside on him i just I'm, I'm having a hard time buying him at the end of the third beginning of the the fourth if he's down further like he was in this last draft if he drops a little bit for, for me kenny uh you know k9 as they call him out here three sticks as we call him on this pod like him and etn kind of do that spider-man meme for me right where they're like pointing at each other like mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah they, they, they i mean i know that they're not the same player um exactly but at the end of the season, I kind of expect the same outcome. Like I, I expect Kenny to be in that RB solid in the RB two, middle of the RB two, hopefully towards the top of the RB two, um, you know, range. So say 20 through, uh, or sorry, um, 14 through 18, somewhere in there, like his, you know, his finish, which is, a, is a, you know, if he does that, I think that's a great season. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned with, some of the talk that's going out, you have kind of outlined what the offensive line, uh, it's definitely going to have some issues in the beginning with the suspension and then, um, you know, them coming back and getting cohesion. And, um, and I really like, you know, Bigsby, I think tank is a, is a solid, decent player behind him um, now. And I, I don't know if Joe Michael hasty was really, you know, <laughs> really holding it down in, in the sense of a, a solid RB two from from a season long perspective. I mean, he definitely played well towards the end, but um, that that's kind of my overview on on Jacksonville. Yeah, I, I think for me, it's I I, I was never really in. Uh, I was in on Kenny before the draft. Now a little bit more out on Kenny uh, after the draft at cost and it hasn't slid down quite as much as I wanted to. And then Travis ETN, again, I both, I really like both of these players a whole lot. Uh, I just don't love the cost of Travis ETN and I didn't like the cost of Travis ETN pre-draft or post-draft. Um, you know, I, and that had nothing to do with Doug Peterson's, uh, you know, saying, Hey, we, we don't want this guy to be at 74%. We'd like to see him a little under 70%, uh, for the season of, of snap share or snap percentage or whatever, uh, which, 
if you have any, if you're familiar with Doug Peterson, you know that's what he wants to do. I mean, he traded for Hasty in the middle of the season because uh, they needed somebody, um, and now they've got Tank Bigsby. And am I worried about Tank the way I'm worried about Charbonnet? Not really, and I think that's why I, I lean a little bit more towards ETN because I think the, the talent disparity b- between Tank and Charbonnet and the backup is, is uh, you know, a decent gap and, and then I'm a guy who likes tank a whole lot. I, I'm not. I, right. I, I like tank a, a good bit. I think the receiving was, was underrated for him. And that's kind of what people are pointing to is that they're, you know, all of a sudden it's weird that there's all, there was not this many tank Bigsby fans, uh, before the draft. And now that I think just a lot of people have historically really hated on ETN. Um, and, and then, you know, being efficient and being good. And again, you know, this is ETN's second year, but it's really, this was his rookie season. He broke his foot the first season and they had Urban Meyer. So you could just throw that whole thing right, right out the fucking window. I mean, and and the fact that he can't get better and, and you could point to some bad blunders in the pass game a little bit there. But, you know, he went from a guy who you didn't consider a pass catcher in college to basically making you consider him a reasonable enough pass catcher uh, moving to the next level. And yeah, did he have a couple of, of, of blunders in, in his first season, basically in the league? Sure. But to, to think that he's not going to improve and get better is just absolutely wild to me that you just base it off of one season. That was basically a rookie season. And he's historically a guy who comes in and works really hard. He already showed you that he can turn it around from a zero to being something that you have to acknowledge. And, and I think he can take that one step further. There's no doubt in my mind that he is for sure a better player than Tank Bigsby and they're you know they're not that I'm saying that there's really a doubt in my mind that Walker is a better player than Charbonnet but it's a lot closer um so that that when comparing these two that that would be my um you know I would lean a little bit more towards ETN and feel a little bit better towards him but I'm really not really looking at ETN uh or Kenneth Walker a ton right now they're they're kind of mostly passes for me and i really like them and i hope to buy back in at some point um but you know i'm i'm looking at josh jacobs and uh i'm looking at uh ramondres and i'm looking at tony pollard maybe a little even later than those guys and i'll take Najee harris i know nobody likes to hear that uh but i'll take that unquestioned unrivaled volume and a good pass catcher uh for, for him. So those are the guys that I'm kind of looking at and skipping over a lot of the times, uh, the Kenny walkers, um, and the ETNs. But again, just like I said, Charbonnet, cause I don't mind the cost. I will also take tank Bigsby, uh, 15th in sleeper ADP and 11th in ours, which is pretty high. So in our drafts, I'm pretty much never getting him. So if he goes again, I like tank Bigsby. Uh, if he's going anywhere in the 11th round, I'm probably letting somebody else fucking take him. If he's anywhere near the 15th round, though, now now I'm interested because I, I, again, do like the player, but it's not about the player. It's about the cost. Exactly. Um, so, you know, that, that, that's kind of my general takeaway with with ETN. I, I think I think they're good. And we're we're expecting much like we talked about with uh, or you alluded to with the Seahawks that, you know, hey, there's there's not too many better lineups for skill position wise from top to bottom well i mean the jags got a pretty good one too they, they don't have quite the elite names per se as as what you're thinking that the the seahawks are going to have but kirk was very good last year they're bringing in calvin ridley which i know he hasn't played but w- w- it was an elite separator for the entire time that he was in the league uh being healthy evan ingram was great last year uh they have travis Etienne. they have a good backup now in, in bigsby and uh Dearness Johnson. Uh, so, you know, even cheaper, I'll take some Dearness Johnson and maybe he ends up being the number two to start the season because he has been around and Dearness has been very good yeah. uh, in, in spot, and spot start situations and uh, just getting out on the field a little bit and showing kind of what he can do. So they, they've, they've built themselves a nice little backfield. I wouldn't be surprised if you see a rotation between Tank and Dearness at least for a while. And you just look at what the Eagles did uh, with Doug Peterson. It was a, it was a decent rotation. Uh, through those guys with with one good main guy. So uh, that's kind of my general thoughts on ETN. You got anything? Yeah, I mean, I think you're right there with the cost of both of these guys. It's going to be, I don't want to say a tough pill to swallow, but it's just like, you're right. I'd rather look at Najee. I'd rather look at Stevenson. Jacob's 
to a certain extent as well too. But it's just like it, it's that it's not really they're not really guys that are like jumping off the page like yes. And I'm with the same thing with Big D said like these are guys you want to count on as your RB two, not your RB one. If you're counting them on these guys, your RB one, you're probably going to come away just a, a little disappointed. Right. No. I, yeah. I and I think that I think that's basically my my sentiments on it too. Um, and so, you know. I, I gave you the Kenny the Kenny three sticks uh, breakdown. I'll give you a little bit of the ETN breakdown of what he did. Two hundred and twenty one attempts. That's good for thirteenth. Eleven hundred and twenty yards. That's good for ninth. Um, Five point one yards per attempt. That's good for eight. Um, five touchdowns. So you, you think that that number could potentially go up? Uh, yards should have should have had six last year. He fumbled the ball literally walking into the end zone last year. Right. Uh, Yards after contact, uh, number 16. Yards after contact per attempt, 3.08, number 21. 10 plus yard, yard runs, uh, 26, good for 10. Design runs over 15 yards, 16, that's good for number five. Breakaway percentage, 40.3, that's good for sixth. Uh, first downs, 52, uh, it's tied for 10th. 43 targets, 35 receptions, 316 on the rushing or receiving yards, uh, three drops for three sticks, and 57 missed tackles for good for number five. So kind of circling back around to the Spider-Man gifts pointing at each other. If you if you mm-hmm. just put basically those kind of numbers next to each other, they're not really all that different of, of kind of what they did. Some were better for for ETN and some were a little better for Walker, but they're they're kind of the same, right? Right. Um, and yeah, while, when it adds up, when you add up all the fantasy points, right? They, they, right. they, they kind of, they're, they're right there next to each other. They're, they're, RB they're, 17, RB 18 on the season. Um, exactly. You know, yep. 21, uh, 12.1 points per game for ETN and 13.5 points game for Kenny. 3-6, Kenny just played less games um, and was, you know, good in those games. 205 uh, total points for uh, ETN and 202.5 total points for Kenny Walker. So I think that's a good, you know, they're, they're stylistically maybe not the same how they approach the play, but what you saw and, and how they operate and score points uh, can look similar. And they're, they, they're high, they, they can produce highlight plays and breakaway plays. Uh, the breakaway percentage, 40.3 uh, and 45.8 for Kenny three sticks. That was, you know, number two and number six. So, and both were high in the 10 plus yards and design runs over 15 yards. So home run hitters are what these guys are. Um, yep. And, you know, so I do like both out on cost. It seemed like you were uh, to, you know, out, out on ETN a little more and a little more in on three sticks. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, value wise, I think I'm out on on ETN a little bit more, but I, I'm not out on him. Right. Like if he if his price comes down or if I see somebody in my league that's kind of panicking that doesn't mean i'm not going after him i think that's one thing i want to make sure that we're clear here i don't think sure, any of, anybody here um is out uh, in the sense of like i don't want them on my team i think they're all um that, that if we reset that expectation level i you know i think the backfield in jacksonville I'm, I'm only wanting etn if i have etn then i might be more interested in tank whereas on the flip side right in seattle i'm interested in sharp yeah. Um, I'm, you know, if I don't have Kenny, I'm, I'm still interested in adding Sharp to my, my squad, you know, yeah, so like that. that could be a little bit of a difference there. But, but for the most part, like, you know, if, if somebody wants to give them away to me, um, you know, I had, um, I'm, I'm in a rookie draft with some weird settings, but, but I will say that um, I drafted uh, Anthony Richardson at three. The guy that was on at the four spot wanted to move up basically to get Anthony Richardson was talking about Walker. And then I would have to add a little bit in there. I mean, if you're going <laughs> to give me Walker in, in a, in a move up in a, in a, in a, you know, in a rookie draft, like I don't, I didn't ask what the, um, what the up was. Cause I really wanted, <laughs> it was my only share I was going to have a Richardson. But, but point being is like, if, if that is the the thought process on some of them, you, you better believe it that I noted down that dude's name and, and his expectation on Walker in that league. And, you know, the first couple games, if Kenny comes out flat, I'm going to be going over there and seeing what I can get him for because I'm not against adding them um, as long right. as the value is where I think it is and not, you know, not RB3 overall. So I think, I think that's a good point. If either one of these guys do start slow, I'm not out at all. And I think, right. you know, that's, yeah. you know, what, what a lot of people do, which makes me angry. And I know that it's not actually them saying that they're out because most of them really aren't out, but that's, you know, can't be a good show unless you're definitively saying, no, I'm out. I don't want anything to do with either one of these guys. And it's like, yeah. no, it's all about cost and you should never really be out. The price should be driving, 
you know, what your kind of thought is. Um, but no, I think that's a good, I think that's a good, uh, thought to end this thing with is, you know, uh, if they do, if either one of these guys come out flat, uh, I think people will be out with their pitchforks, uh, and, and at least the masses. And I think there will be a nice buy opportunity, uh, right. for, for both these guys. And I, and I don't mind doing so. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Uh, if you haven't already checked out the, um, industry mock that we've put out we got four rounds a uh, bunch of content out there with a bunch of great uh dynasty creators a uh, bunch of different minds make sure you uh go check that out but that's why you should be subscribed and uh you know so all that stuff comes right to you you, you wouldn't you wouldn't have to have me tell you about it to go find it uh, you would already know about it uh so we appreciate you guys uh we'll be back Probably maybe talking a little Madison and Dalvin Cook here after this video. What do you think? Could be. You have to subscribe and find out. That's right. <laughs> All right, boys. We appreciate you guys. We'll see you later. Peace. <laughs>